In 1999, the remains of a 20-year-old beheaded boy were found in the Mexican temple of Aztec wind god Ejicatl. The boy was holding a ceramic skull in each hand. Initially dismissed as toys, they were later discovered to be instruments, now known as the Aztec death whistle, due to their bone-chilling, terrifying sound. But their purpose is unknown. Today, we'll discuss some prevailing theories. Were they used ceremonially as part of human sacrifices? Maybe they were used to scare enemies during battle, or they could have been used to heal the sick. We'll go over all these theories on this episode of Technically a Conversation. You're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined today by my lovely co host, Elena. How are you doing today? Fabulous. How are you? Doing fantastic. How has your week been going? Busy. The little one started school and uh, he's getting accustomed to that. So, dropping him off, picking him up, and then I'm working the night schedule. So I'm trying to juggle my sleep in between picking him up and dropping him off and him being home and then me having to go to work. It's a lot. (laughs) But I enjoy the fact that I don't have to involve or get anybody else involved in taking care of him. That I do love about my schedule, that I can drop him off and pick him up and take care of them without having to get a sitter or daycare or whatever, or family member. That's the great thing about that schedule. But um, it's just I'm like sleep deprived most of the time. I'm pretty sure that's harming my body (laughs) in multiple ways. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I could do that. Especially not with yours that you like you work a couple of weeks night shift and a couple of weeks morning shift. I'm an insomniac. So I could never adjust. For me, the 12 hours, I think, is what would kill me. Because I think by hour six of my (laughs) regular schedule, I'm already thinking like, fuck, I still have two more hours to go. But then to think that, fuck, I still have six more hours to go, I think that I would end up going crazy. I would end up taking off all my clothes and running around and screaming or something. (laughs) 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 But at least you get to work from home, you know? That is awesome. I feel like, There would be a lot of things that would distract me if I worked from home. And in those 12 hours, I definitely would be able to fill that up by like washing clothes or whatever I have to do around the house, like in between breaks, pee pee breaks, whatever. (laughs) And at at my job, I don't want to say that there's never a dull moment because there are a lot of dull moments, especially during the night shift. But there's just so much action that it makes the day go by quicker. I guess. All right, enough fucking around, Elena. Ready to get started? Ready. Great, let's get started. So this episode comes out on September 18th, and we are on day three of Hispanic Heritage Month. Not sure if you knew this, Elena, but I am Mexican, so I wanted to cover some Mexican heritage. Represent la raza. You're Mexican? I am. I didn't know that. Now you do. And knowing is half the battle. (laughs) I like to say that I'm Mexican-American. (laughs) Mexican-American. As of September 18th, we are 43 days from Halloween. So I thought that I would cover something a little creepy and spooky and also represent Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm going to cover something that we don't know very much about, but we have a lot of theories. So it gives us a chance to kind of think about the theories and see which one we like the best. Nice. We're going to go way back to the Aztec or Mexica times with this one. Uh Uh-oh, are we going to talk about the Aztec calendar? We are not. Oh, okay. (laughs) But that might have answered the question I was going to ask you. What is the first thing that you think about when you think about the Aztecs? The calendar and how it ran out like a few years ago, but I don't remember when that was. That supposedly like it stopped or was that the Mayan calendar? Am I getting my calendars confused? I'm pretty sure it was the Aztec calendar, but it didn't run out. It just reset. It just started all over again, but people were saying, oh, it it ran out and the world is ending. I don't remember what year that was in, but I remember that. (laughs) 
It was in 2012, and yeah, it was dumb people. <laughs> it was dumb people. <laughs> Is that when um, we celebrated Antonio's birthday in May? And we it was like the end of the world birthday party or something? I don't remember, but that sounds like something that we would do because we're very morbid <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, okay, if it's going to end, we're going to celebrate Antonio's birthday and the end of the world. Woohoo! <laughs> that sounds like something that we would do. When I think of the Aztecs, the first thing that I think of is definitely the pyramids. I might be biased, but I think the Mexican pyramids are the most beautiful pyramids in the world. And like we were talking about, I also think about the Aztec calendar, especially since I have a huge one on my living room wall. You do. There is another thing that I think about now, something that now that I've experienced it, haunts my dreams and waking thoughts. Probably the most terrifying and horrific sound I've ever heard. Insert your thunderstorm clap thingy. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be inserting a sound in a moment, <laughs> and it's going to be a lot more terrifying than that. I was going to say, I hope it's not a bell sound. <laughs> it is not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not as terrifying as a bell. <laughs> okay. But it's something that now that I've heard it, I can't unhear it. Oh, God. And I imagine this is a sound that'll be the last thing that I hear when I take my last waking breath. The following is from a How Stuff Works article by David Ruse and a Culture Trip article by Stephen Woodman. Links in the show notes. In 1999, while excavating the temple of the Aztec wind god Ejicatl, archaeologists discovered the remains of a 20-year-old boy who was beheaded at the base of the temple's main stairway. The boy appeared to be the victim of human sacrifice, but what made the find remarkable is that he was found clutching a small ceramic skull in each hand. The archaeologists quickly realized that the menacing skull's face represented Mictlantecutli, the Aztec god of the underworld and death. The clay sculptures were originally thought of as toys and were cataloged and stored in a museum warehouse. A few years later, however, some CT scans of the skulls were performed, and it was discovered that the skulls were a form of instrument. A music archaeologist put the instrument to his mouth and decided to blow into it and discovered the sound it produced sounded like it would resurrect the dead from their graves to desecrate Mexico City. Oh, shit. Named the Aztec Death Whistle, its discovery has spawned numerous theories, but its true purpose is unknown. Let's examine some of the most prevalent ones. But first, Elena, are you familiar with the Aztec Death Whistle? I am definitely not. Would you like me to play you a little sample of it so you can hear it? I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to, <laughs> especially since you're like, it's the last sound I'm going to hear when I die. <laughs> Shit. I don't want to die yet. <laughs> well, like I said, you can't unhear the sound. Oh, my gosh. Is it going to be worse than the number stations? I don't know. That was kind of creepy. That's going to be for our super friends and for you to decide. All right. I'm ready, I think. All right. I'm going to warn you. It will haunt you until your dying day. Thank you. So if you don't want to have sleepless nights like King Diamond, I recommend you skip about 32 seconds. Oh, I can't I can't skip 32 seconds. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you're going to have to live through it. Okay. <laughs> this sample is from Boom Library. Please don't sue us. Pretty fucking scary, huh? Yes. Is that just like one continuous whistle and all of that is coming from the whistle? Or are they adding special effects to the sound? Because it almost sounded like there was like background music to it. Yeah, they did add a little bit of background music to it. Okay. I'll actually touch on that in just a bit. But after hearing that, I think I'm going to have to change during our break because <laughs> I think I might have soiled myself. <laughs> and my shoes and my glasses. <laughs> Some depends on it. We need Depends to uh, um, sponsor us too now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, uh, alluding to what you were you were asking, of course, this is a professional recording. 
and they did add background instrumentation to make it sound more creepy and ominous, but pretty much all those screams that you heard were made using the Aztec death whistle. And I think they might have used Aztec death whistles of different sizes to make different pitches. Ah. Oh. The bigger the whistle, the louder the screams. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> We were both going to make the same joke. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. And with sounds that terrifying, the theories are all over the place as to what the Aztec death whistle was used for. Those screeching noises were pretty scary, though. <laughs> it sounds like hell, like what I envision hell would sound like. I imagine hearing those screams as like the hands pull my spirit down into hell or whatever. Right. <laughs> now, before we go over some of the theories, would you like to take a guess, a gander, if you will, as to how these Aztec death whistles could have been used? I don't know. So you said it was like some young kid that was holding these two skulls that were actually instruments who was probably sacrificed. Uh, maybe they're used in... Um in sacrificial rituals and they're like blowing these whistles as they're sacrificing somebody and then like the ultimate fuck you was like here's two here's two instruments where we fucking i don't know <laughs> we like uh blew this whistle at you while you died i don't know <laughs> well until you got to that last part you know that is one of the the theories that there is and it's going to be the first theory that we we talk about arnd aj both a music archaeologist of pre-Columbian musical instruments of Mesoamerica was actually the first person to play the two Aztec death whistles that were found with the sacrificed 20-year-old boy in the Mexican temple. After doing CT scans of the whistles and building replicas, he discovered they were a type of air spring whistle first invented by the Mayans around 700 or 800 AD. The air is blown through the intake tube it interacts with the well or spring inside the chamber to create distortions. The opening at the bottom of the whistle can be cupped with a hand to shape the tone. The thing that's most interesting about these air spring whistles, according to both, is that they are only found in pre-Columbian America and thus can't be classified with other wind instruments that are found in other parts of the world. So in other words, it's only found in this region in pre-Columbian America. And so this intake part of the whistle, is it located in the same spot of every skull? Do you know? Or is it in different locations? And do you know where the intake is? That I don't know. I just envision it being the mouth and then it coming out of the ears. <laughs> I think most of the ones that I saw, the intake was in the back and the skull usually would have the, an open mouth and then the bottom of the skull would be hollow and that's where you would cup it. Oh, uh, okay. But no, there are a ton of these things, and I think some of them might be a little bit different. Both believes that it's no coincidence that the death whistles were found at the temple for wind god Ejicatl, as there's a strong connection between the wind god and Mictlantecutli, the god of the underworld. In the Codex Borgia, which is a pre-Columbian document that depicts the Aztec gods and history, there is an image of Mictlantecutli and Ejicatl guarding the entrance of the underworld and are believed to represent two parts of a whole, death and life. That makes me feel all cheery inside. How about you? Yeah, nice and warm, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice and warm because I'm being dragged to hell. <laughs> Both states that, quote, all of these elements start to fit together like a puzzle. There's a possibility that these instruments were played inside the temple as part of a ritualistic performance related to death and sacrifice. They were meant to simulate the cold night winds of the underworld. So that's kind of what you were alluding to. Okay, yeah. Before you said just the cool night winds, I was like, that is what the wind sounded like back then? And then you said, oh, the underworld. I'm like, oh, okay, makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of sound a little bit like wind though. Um, and I'll actually play some more samples a little bit later. and You can listen to it a little bit more. Cool. According to the Codex Borgia, in one level of the underworld, the dead need to cross a large field while being whipped by fierce ice cold winds. Those winds are represented in the Codex Borgia by obsidian blades, which coincidentally were also used by the Aztec to make human sacrifices. 
both says that a ceramic bowl containing obsidian blades were found next to the body of the boy, which would support this theory. Both's theory also lines up with an Aztec festival description by Louis Spence, which he wrote about in a book called Myth of Mexico and Peru. In his book, he wrote, quote, On the day of this festival, a youth was slain who for an entire year previously had been carefully instructed in the role of victim. He assumed the name, garb, and attributes of Tezcatlipoca himself as the earthly representative of the deity. He carried also the whistle symbolic of the deity as lord of the night wind and made with it a noise such as the weird wind of night makes when it hurries through the streets. Both and Spence both talk a lot about wind and the Aztec death whistle does kind of sound like wind in a way, right? So that kind of makes sense. Mm, sounds more like screams to me, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it kind of sounds like the cold hand of death touching my back. I got <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Very descriptive. Feels like the wind of death. I think that's the cold hand of death touching your back. <laughs> I was going to say, instead of the wind of change, it's the wind of death. I like it. It has a nice little ring to it. Mm, should write a song about it. <laughs> Maybe. According to David Aruz, who wrote the How Stuff Works article, if Spence's description of the Aztec festival is accurate, then it's possible that the young man they found sacrificed in Ejicaro's temple may have sounded the death whistle before his beheading. Whoa. What do you think about that theory? So basically he brought death upon himself because he was playing with this damn whistle. <laughs> Maybe he knew that he was going to be the sacrificial victim and that was what he had to play in order to honor the underworld gods. Oh, gotcha. And that's why he's clutching them in his hands. According to that theory, yes. But two of them? He's double fisting? Double fisting, <laughs> Aztec death whistles, yes. <laughs> There's a couple of other interesting theories about how they could have been used. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. And when we return, we'll talk about how the Aztec death whistle could have been used in battle to scare the living shit out of their enemies or might have been used to cure illnesses. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be buried in an avalanche? weird foreign feeling of despair or how it feels to crash a skydive i remember hearing a thud feeling my body hit the ground or how you would react if you were being attacked by an alligator at the end of my leg is this huge alligator head on my leg these are the stories you'll hear on the podcast called what was that like true stories told by the actual person who went through it you'll hear from a victim of an attack Dragging me into the bathroom and saying, I'm going to kill you. Now you're going to die. You'll hear from a man who discovered a baby. How could this be? How could there be a baby on the ground? And you'll hear actual 911 calls. Plinky County 911. There's a man at my back door. He's trying to get in. What Was That Like is a podcast about real people in unreal situations. Search for What Was That Like on any podcast app or at whatwasthatlike.com. If you like true crime, dark history, the haunted and paranormal, then we think you'll like Ghost Town. Ghost Town is hosted by me, Rebecca Lieb. And me, Jason Horton. We cover both notorious and obscure true crimes. The haunted, paranormal, and unexplained. And the dark history of everything from world events to pop culture. There are new episodes of Ghost Town every Wednesday and Friday. Find out for yourself what Vulture.com called Essential Listening and one listener called A Total Waste of Time. So pause the podcast you're listening to right now. And go subscribe to Ghost Town for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And at ghosttownpod.com. And we're back. We're back. Elena, did you blow on any death whistles before mercilessly beheading your human sacrificial offering to Ejicatl? Well, not on any death whistles, but... No, I'm just kidding. No, I didn't blow on anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you just mercilessly beheaded your human sacrificial offering without blowing on a death whistle? Pretty much. I think that's kind of rude. <laughs> 
That's me. I'm rude. I'm a selfish bitch. <laughs> what was that? That Full House girl? The how wooed? Um, that Stephanie or some shit? Yes, it was Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you used to tell me. You used to say that I was like her all the time. You would compare me to her all the time, and I would get so annoyed by it. Like, how wooed? You look like Stephanie from Full House. Me, me, me. Hated it. How wooed? <laughs> how rude. I guess because I was annoying like her for a while. Oh, maybe you still kind of are a little. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Damn. I'm going to go blow on some death whistles now. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> now, before our break, I teased about how the Aztec death whistle could have possibly been used by the Aztecs as a way to psych out their enemies in battle. This is the sound of a single Aztec death whistle being played by its lonesome. Still pretty fucking scary, huh? Yeah. Sounds a little bit like a fox in despair. No, I don't know. Sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Thankfully, I've never experienced that. Well, I haven't either, but that's the first thing that came into mind for some reason. I do definitely hear where they get that wind from because it does kind of have a wind property to it. Like, I guess when wind hits your windows and it has like maybe a little bit of like there's not enough caulking or something on the windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does sound like that. I guess, but it's, you know, it's a way lower moan than it is a screech. I do definitely hear more of the screech. Yeah. Now imagine you're Hernán Cortés. You just landed on the new world. You get out of the boat and you're like, what's good, fam? Don't mind us. We're just here to kill your men and children, rape your women and pillage your land. What's the haps, yo? Where's the Bud Light, yo? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, where's the Bud Light? And then you hear the following sound approaching. I don't know about you, but that would be enough for me to a la verga jump back onto my boat <laughs> and sail against the current the fuck out of there. What do you think? No, the other two sounds were way scarier. This sounded more like a like waves or a vehicle approaching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The other two sounds way more scary. I don't know what this was. That song was created by the Fuzzy Brothers on the YouTubes and also shows an indigenous man, Javier Quijas Ijayotl playing the death whistle. Ijayotl is pretty much the rock star of the death whistle. If you Google Aztec death whistle, you're going to see his name everywhere, as well as videos of him playing the whistle. He's the person probably most responsible for popularizing it and has played it and other pre Columbian instruments at countless festivals, concerts, and special events. He also created the instruments that were used in Mel Gibson's film Apocalypto. Okay, so are these. Death whistles that he's using replicas or the actual thing? Do you know? I believe these are replicas. Oh, okay. Ihayotl claims that the Aztecs terrified their enemies by sounding hundreds of screaming death whistles at one time. The Fuzzy Brothers claim in their video that that sound I just played you was the sound of 1,000 Aztec death whistles being played at the same time. And they also added the ambient sound and horse gallops and stuff like that to make the nightmare tonight that much more authentic. Right. It's a nice little touch. They didn't have to do that, but they did, and I'm here for it. It actually sounds a little bit like white noise and that I could fall asleep to it. <laughs> I'll make sure to send you all these Aztec death whistle noises so you can play them at night. I'm just talking about the last one <laughs> with like the little crickets in the background. <laughs> it did sound kind of pretty, huh? See, that would not make me run away. But the other, the other two for sure. Heck yeah. You know what? Just play two at a time. Don't play a thousand at a time because it, it did sound kind of soothing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what happens also when when there's so much sound, it does kind of sound like white noise at times. Yeah. When Hernán Cortés led his Spanish conquistadores in a clash with the Aztecs in 1521, they described the Aztec warriors as using drums, shells, and other musical instruments during battles to communicate with each other 
and possibly to frighten their enemies. Spanish friar Tomás de Torquemada also wrote that, quote, one Aztec general carried a drum on his shoulder, which he played at the start of the battle, while others blew large shell trumpets. What they described as shell trumpets could have easily have been death whistles, and perhaps they just didn't really know how to describe them. Maybe, yeah. Well, I guess a shell can look a little bit like a skull. <laughs> well, I guess when you're trying not to get killed, it might be easy to mistake a skull for a shell. True, true. Aren't both. The music archaeologist says that this is possible, but there really isn't any proof that this is how the whistles were used. If they would have been used in battle, you would find Aztec warriors with the death whistle around their necks or carrying the death whistles on them. But it's possible that we just haven't found them. Based on where they've been found, they appear to be more of a ritual instrument. What do you think? I think it's more of a ritual instrument, for sure. Here's another theory. Okay. Culture trip also suggests that some experts believe the Aztecs might have used sound vibrations to treat illnesses because some of the whistles produce sounds that are too low for the human ear to be able to hear. These sounds are referred to as infrasonic sounds because even though you can't hear them, they can cause physiological effects like a change in heart rate or a different state of consciousness. Some researchers also believe that the whistles might have been used to put patients in a hypnotic state or to alleviate pain. That really was the only reference to it being used to heal that I found in either of the sources that I used. But what do you think? Do you think that might have been possible? So instead of a sacrifice, they were trying to heal this young boy, maybe? Maybe, or maybe it was used to put the boy in a hypnotic state before he was sacrificed. Mm. I don't know. The way that these things sound would make me think that it's more of a sacrificial thing, but healing powers, eh, I would say it's maybe the second theory that I would endorse. Ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> It's got your official endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of the Nike symbol, it'll be the Elena symbol, whatever that is. Yes, whatever that is. <laughs> we'll come up with that later. <laughs> I personally don't believe that it was used for that reason, but I know that there are a lot of studies that are being done surrounding how sound affects the body, so I would love to be proven wrong. I know music is very beneficial with people suffering from different cognitive ailments, but I don't know if frequencies have the ability to heal people. Yeah, well, you see like a lot of those frequency channels on YouTube, like to heal uh, migraines or headaches or help you study, help you go to sleep, all that ASMR stuff, you know, uh, maybe. I think it might have an effect on certain people. I, I know for some people, ASMR does have an effect on them. Yeah, not on me, but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have an effect on me either. But there is some stuff that I do find very, um, I don't want to say pleasurable, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but very soothing, I guess. Yeah. Which one of these three theories was your favorite? Mm, my favorite? Probably the first one. For me, I would love to imagine that they were used in battle to scare the shit out of their opponents. But I think I side with both on his theory, since that's where we actually have some evidence. Anything else that you wanted to add to this? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think I added quite a lot <laughs> throughout. <laughs> that's good. I like participation. And we would love it if some of our super friends participated as well. So let's take the discussion online, to quote Michael Rosenbaum, and hit us up on our Instagram or our TikTok. Yes, and I will actually respond to you from my handle and not from the technically a conversation handle, just so that I don't confuse people. And I will respond from uh, whatever handle is most convenient for me at the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Speaking of responses... We got the sweetest message possible from super friend Bonita Bequita. Not sure if that's her real name, but I'm here for it. I am too. Is that the one that you just shared with us? It is. Oh, yes. Are you going to have AI read it or? God, you're getting ahead of yourself, girl. <laughs> There's no other way to describe her aside from Bonita, from the amazing message she sent us. Want me to read it? Of course. Now, I originally was going to have AI read it but I couldn't find a voice to do it justice. Aww. Hopefully I don't fuck it up since I can't read, but Bonita Bakita writes, This message is long overdue, but I would love to stop by and thank you all for the stories and laughs you bring to every episode. I binged all throughout my time in cosmetology school and even more so when my husband deployed, so your acronyms and common phrases episode 
came in handy when I talked to him. The only time I had to stop listening to an episode was your number stations episode, only because it was late and dark and I got scared, so I had to wait till the next morning. I was a little worried when I found out Elena was joining the show, only because Jose and Isela's chemistry is so great. I thought it might throw it off. But honestly, Elena was the missing piece I never knew you all needed. The relationship between her and Jose reminds me so much of how mine is with my brother, who is also a Jose. Once again, thank you all so much for the information, commentary, and laughs. You all are amazing. And she put down two purple heart emojis. I'm guessing one purple heart is for you, Elena. The other is for me. Isela doesn't get a purple heart. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hers is an invisible heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so sweet. I felt so touched by that message. And I showed it to my husband. I was like, look, how sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And, and originally I wanted to have AI read it because I was scared I was going to start crying while reading it. Oh. Just because of how sweet it is. It's very sweet. Yeah. I was afraid too. I didn't want to mess up your dynamic. <laughs> Bonita Bakita, thank you so much for your super sweet and super kind words. They really made my day. And I know they made your day and Isela's day as well. For sure. Thank you. What do you think, Elena? Should we do it? Yes, we should. Definitely. Bonita Bakita, you're our super friend of the week. And don't forget the burr, 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 burr. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> On that high note, we hope that you enjoyed the show and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. Yeah. Follow us on the socials at GreetingsTAC, email us at GreetingsTAC at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669. If you have a story to share with us about the time you used a death whistle before you beheaded a sacrificial victim. About the time you listened to the death whistle. The whistle. <laughs> <laughs> About the time you listen to the death wish wish hold of it. <laughs> it's too late. I'm keeping that in. That's staying in there. The death whistle is staying in. <laughs> the whistle before you listen to the death whistle to lull you to sleep. <laughs> Jesus. Now you know how hard it is for me. I can barely say a sentence without fucking up. I I, I can't even spoke so. <laughs>